It's been two decades since uh, Bajaj first launched the Pulsar 150 in India and uh, since that time the bike managed to offer impressive performance, had muscular looks and even the motor was frugal enough to offer quite some mileage. So all of this worked out well in the brand's favour as the Pulsar 150 ended up being one of the highest selling motorcycles. And over the course of year it also received a number of updates but uh, the overall design had been too long in the tooth and uh, now a sportier uh, commuter offering would have been a welcome change. So Bajaj has introduced this, the Pulsar P150. Now uh, Bajaj says that uh, this will be sold alongside the Pulsar 150 and there, since there is a market for uh, premium commuter uh, bikes in the 150cc segment. But what we are here to find out is uh, does the Pulsar uh, P150 has uh, the traits from the Pulsar 150 and uh, something new of its own? Or is it just a lost sheep in the 150-160cc segment uh, that has names like the TVS Apache, Honda Unicorn, and uh, even the Yamaha FZ. So let's see what the P150 has to offer. But before we proceed ahead, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Bike Wale. Now let's talk about its uh, design first. Uh, as you can see, the P150 looks uh, quite stylish and uh, sportier than the Pulsar 150 as it gets uh, different uh, bodywork, uh, these uh, uh, tank shrouds and uh, sharper panels. And the design overall is, uh, would be preferred by a slightly younger buyer and uh, even when you look at its headlight, you would uh, think that this one uh, resembles to the N160 but on a closer inspection, you'd notice that this is a different unit although it does get the projector LED headlamp and uh, even with this uh, paint scheme of uh, blacked out parts with the contrasting red finish, the P150 looks quite stylish. Speaking of the paint quality, it's quite consistent all over and there's really nothing to complain about. Even the welds and the plastic quality is up the standards and the panel gaps are quite consistent all over the bike. Now the seat cover offers enough grip and the rear grab rail is also quite sturdy when you give it a good hold. Now that we have got the design and uh, quality out of the way, uh, let's uh, have a look at the P150's ergonomics. It gets a seat height of 790mm, so you can see swinging a leg over it is uh, quite easy. And uh, uh, talking about the rider triangle, the handlebar is placed towards the rider. The saddle is a little upright from the rear and uh, the rider foot peg is a little rear set. However, nothing too intrusive and the uh, overall uh, uh, rider triangle is uh, quite uh, comfortable and exactly what you'd expect from a commuter motorcycle. Speaking of the saddle, there is enough space for both the rider and the pillion. However, the cushioning is a little firm, so it should work well when you are in the saddle for long hours. But uh, the grab rail is a little rare set, so getting a hold of them uh, could be a task for the pillion. Uh, now, uh, the P150 weighs about uh, 141 kilos. So let's see how easy it is to move around. Let me demonstrate this to you. So as you can see, moving it in and uh, out of uh, tight parking spots or general tight spaces is uh, quite easy. Now Bajaj says that the P150 has been uh, powered by a completely revamped motor when you consider uh, the older Pulsar 150. Uh, it's a 149cc single cylinder engine that makes about 14.5bhp uh, and 13.5 newton meters. This has made it to a 5 speed gearbox. But uh, before we proceed ahead, let's see what this uh, underbelly exhaust uh, sounds like. Uh, this is what it sounds at idle. Somewhere around the mid range. somewhere around uh, 9 to 10,000 rpm. So what do you think of its exhaust note? Let us know in the comments below. The Pulsar 150 gained popularity for its engine performance along with other aspects. And in the entire day of uh, riding the P150 around the city, we feel this bike too borrows the same character. Its 149cc engine packs a decent punch and the torque shows an upward graph from 3,500 rpm to 8,5000 rpm. Even when ridden towards the higher rev range, the engine feels solid and makes for a good case of the P150's linear power delivery. The speed climbs gradually and you hit triple digits with a laid back approach. On our way back from the shoot, I rode the bike in 5th gear and let the revs drop to as low as 3,500 rpm. This was followed by a gradual acceleration and the engine built back its momentum with minor shuddering but nothing that would hinder the riding experience. 
in no time the p150 was back at 7000 rpm and easily cruising at around 85 kmph with adequate power left for overtaking if need be the engine refinement levels are likable and the p150 gets a basic exhaust note too overall it's quite likable for what a 150cc motor sounds like not to mention the gearbox too is uh, smooth and can take aggressive up and down shifts the gear lever is also placed uh, in the right position and can be accessed with ease city riding for the bajaj pulsar p150 can be done in uh, third gear and out on the highway you can put it in fifth gear and glide at about 6 7000 rpm but post that there are minor vibrations around the fuel tank all in all the p150's motor packs the performance that would entice a younger buyer but without being very intimidating Now Bajaj suggested that the real world efficiency for the P150 is about 49 kmpl but we can only confirm that once we get the bike for a road test review. There's very bare minimum that the P150 offers when it comes to features. You only get an LED headlight, a USB charging port and a semi digital instrument console. The readouts are neat and clean and even the visibility is decent when the sunlight is angled directly above your head. Now the switches to toggle between the trip meter readings and settings need a good press but that's not really a flaw considering the frequency of their use. The switch cube layout is also neat with all the buttons well within your reach. Most of them have a reassuring click and you need not take your eyes off the road to navigate any of the switches. Now like the entire Pulsar line even the P150 gets a twin disc and a single disc variant and what you see here is the top of the line twin disc variant so at the front it gets a 260 mm disc and at the rear it gets a 230 mm disc goes without saying it gets a single channel ABS uh, with the unit at the front as a safety net and uh, you see it gets regular front forks and monoshock at the rear and since this is a twin disc model it gets a split seat and clip on handlebars whereas the single disc gets a single piece seat and a tube like handlebar now these are 17 inch alloys uh, wrapped in a 90 front and 110 rear mrf tires if you buy the single disc version bajaj gives you an 80 front and a 100 section rear tire Bajaj says that the P150 not only gets a new engine but also a new chassis with the motor being the stressed member. And the moment you uh, start riding the P150 feels well balanced and uh, its almost equal weight distribution at both ends is evident. All the inputs at high speeds are reflected well in terms of direction change and the bike feels pretty stable at high speeds too. In fact, at some points during this ride I came across some gnarly potholes and visible speed bumps and undulations but the P150 held its composure well. Now while on the saddle the P150 feels uh, fairly compact and you can switch lanes or even filter through bumper to bumper traffic without second guessing. Uh, it weighs just 141 kg so tipping in and out of the corners is fun and doesn't feel tiring at all. Moving to the suspension the front forks have adequate travel and so does the rear. But the monoshock feels a little stiff when the bike is ridden at slow speeds over bumps, bridge joints or potholes. However, the same turns out to be plush when you zoom past bad surfaces at slightly higher speeds. Moreover, the springs have enough travel and the bike didn't bottom out even once during a ride. Even the 165 mm ground clearance seems adequate as the bottom didn't even scrape once on any of the speed breakers. Now the braking department for the Pulsar P150 also comes off as a plus. The front brake lever has good progression, feedback and bite. It helps you stop the bike quite predictably and you can really squeeze the lever before the ABS intervenes. And since the P150 gets a single channel ABS which is at the front, the rear tends to lock a bit if you have a heavy foot. But before the rear wheel starts sliding, you get enough bite and can predict the locking as well. As for these MRF tires, we found them to have enough grip since the bike was ridden in dry conditions on both good and bad roads. Now we've spent an entire day with the Pulsar P150 and uh, have come to the conclusion that as an individual offering the P150 is quite likable since since it has borrowed traits from the older Pulsar like uh, uh imp impressive performance uh, good handling though it misses out on the bulk uh, the P150 looks uh, quite muscular and stylish and even as an overall package it has good braking uh, good handling and the fit and finish is also up to the mark and it could make for a good first purchase for someone looking for something uh, new something fresh in the 150 cc market however uh, when you consider its asking price of rupees uh, 1.19 lakh the p150 costs just rupees 2000 less than the tvs apache rtr 160 42v and uh, the hero extreme 160r 
Now both these motorcycles not only uh, offer uh, more power but also have more features for just reach 2000 more. So this is where uh, the Pulsar uh, falls short but overall it really has uh, bare minimum cons to talk about. Now these are our first ride impressions of the P150 but if you want a comprehensive review uh, where we talk more about its mileage and the overall comfort, uh, stay tuned to Bike Wale for our uh, road test review.